Howdy, people! Zard Thwomp here, and welcome to episode 51 of the Great Story 2 Resolve. Last time, we went off to the prison in order to talk to v Van Zeeks after, well, he got arrested for murdering Gregson. And then we went off to the crime scene where Gregson's body was found. We investigated around for a bit, we found some evidence, and now we're going to talk to Gina. Gregson. Gina, what was Inspector Gregson doing here in the first place? That's what I want to know. And why the heck was there this weird, beautiful mind's billboard? What was he planning? It's what, half a year since I got out of the clink? That's why I decided to give up me diving and become a detective instead. Oh yes, Mr. Sholmes twisted the inspector's arm to agree to take you on as an apprentice, didn't he? No, that was Iris. Iris threatened Gregson with a, with a board up the ass, as well as basically screwing over his character in the stories. Something like that, I think. Anyways, the point is, I didn't really know much about the boss till then. But it turns out, he's a bit of a legend at the yard. Goodness, really? They said he managed to solve some really tricky case, just like that. He did. Yup, and ever since then, he started going all out on all sorts of investigations, but always on his own. No one else at the yard even knows what half the cases he's worked on are, apparently. That's not how it's supposed to work, is it? So what was the legendary inspector doing in a dingy little room like this? I know he had a lot of respect for the Reaper and all. And look where that landed him. He's dead now. Respect for the Reaper? In what way? I heard him say as much. I take my ad off to that fella. Where is words? Nah, not how the general public feels, is it? Most people are terrified of the Reaper. Yeah, the boss said that's exactly why he respected the bloke. I didn't realize Gregson held the Reaper in quite such high regard. He said something else to me and all. That I didn't need to worry about the Reaper. Because he only goes after people who are bad. It kind of did set my... Set me... Eh. So I thwomp your bluff... You're flubbing up my lines out. What am I, Samugi? It did kind of set my mind at ease when he said that. Right. What is this place then? Does anyone even live here? Apparently it's being rented by some co called Hugh Boone. Hugh Boone? Hugh Boone? It's a sort of here today, gone tomorrow name. That, that, isn't it? Yeah, he's what we call an unidentified person. We haven't been able to get in touch with him. I see. Well, judging from appearances, I'd have to say this place hasn't been lived in for a long time, if ever. Right, all the lads in the yard piled down to get stuck into an investigation. But there's so little ear, no one knew what to do with themselves. I do wonder. Yes, Mr. Zotto. Well, could it be that this Hugh Boone is in fact Inspector Gregson himself? What? How could you be? How could that be? Well, if he was investigating on his own, it's quite possible that this was in fact some kind of secret office of his. I'd, I'd never even consider that. If it was, it'd be filled to the brim with fish and chips. Nice work, Suze. We're actually following a line of inquiry like that ourselves. You are? If you look around the room, you'll see there's a few things that hint at it. We should, real, we should really investigate this place in detail. Incident. I see that's where the poor inspector was found, over there. Yeah, that's right. They said it was a single boy what did him in. Apparently the boy went right through him and struck that candle tree on the wall. Oh yes, that that blow it's blown all yeah, it's blown one of the candles apart completely. And the gun used in is there on the floor. It's the Reapers in it, no denying that. What? Really? How you know that? Take it easy! I I don't know what to do with myself when you stare me down with them big wide eyes. I'm only saying what I heard. I don't know much about guns myself. But there's some bigwig lawman or whatever who said so. Why don't you ask him? Uh, bigwig lawman, is it? Anyways, Frenzo Street runs along under that window there. That There were some street sellers just outside who heard the gunshot. Ow! 
milk, but I don't recall seeing anybody outside. Yeah, they've all been taken down to the yard for questioning, that's why. We're talking about the yard's legendary inspector here, after all. That would be getting a grilling. Do you think we might be able to speak with those street sellers outside ourselves? I doubt it. The lads at the yard just want to know what you're stupid nooping around for, and you'll be up for grilling and all. So we can't interview the witnesses then. Shame. Oh, much better, much better. Ah, take off my pants. I'm sorry I get heated. Okay. Let's investigate the revolver. Gina, what do you make of this? What is that, evidence? Work something out uh, about what happened, have you? Oh, um, no, not exactly. I ain't been long enough in the job to get all this deducting business yet. But I swear I'm going to get the person what did this to the, the boss. Okay, handle. I suppose this must have been the murder weapon. Oh, oh my. It's real, I suppose. I, I think so. Guns are so rare in Japan, I really know little about them. Perhaps someone more familiar with firearms could shed a light on things here. Gina, yes, nothing. Okay. Okay, search around. The helmet of this charming police man appears to be a little worse for wear. I'm not convinced about the charming part, but yes, you're right. The head part looks like it's fine. It's been fairly heavily manhandled. Almost as if somebody has enjoyed twisting it around and around for fun. Shall we try twisting it around and around for fun too? Ah, what's this? It appears to be some sort of key. But it's tiny, though. It couldn't be a key for a door. Not at that size. So what is it for, I wonder? Okay. Policeman figure. Updated. Come on, get me the key to see. This looks like some sort of key. Yes, it does. A very tiny and simple key. What's a little key like this doing inside a figurine of a policeman in the first place? And what's it for? I've always wondered what the underside of a hairpiece looked like. That doesn't surprise you at all, Mr. Naruto. You always want us to see what lies beneath, don't you? I'm not sure that qu that's quite how I'd put it. You must have used the, you must use a lot of bird lime to keep it in place on your head. So it doesn't get blown off by a gust of wind, I mean. That might be a little inconvenient when you wanted to take it off again, don't you think? Okay, nothing else. Candelabra. Candelabra. Boom, there we go. Ah, there's some black marks here, look. Yes, they look like some sort of scorch marks. So perhaps the bullet struck the candle here, do you think? It's only this one candle that's been cracked in half, it seems. Yes, I think you might be right. Firearms are rarely used by criminals in Japan, so I'm afraid I'm not particularly knowledgeable about them. Okay, check that out. Okay. Nothing here about that. Okay. The wig. Okay, apparently we wear it with the wig already. Candelabra. Nothing. Okay, really, what can we present? Okay, nothing in this area can be checked, apparently. Okay, converse, we got all the conversation topics. Okay, let me just see what's going on here. Okay, nothing over there. Aha! Um, excuse me. Oh, Inspector! Oh, Inspector, oh, sir! Poor man, he can't possibly be able to focus on investigating when he's so upset. 
Okay, anything? Um, excuse me. Sorry, sir. Can't see a thing, sir. Too many tears, sir. Right, perhaps I'd better leave you to your work then. Come on, let us see. Now. What else lies beneath the surface? Now. Can we look at everything on the wall? Can we see what is going on near and far? What else can we see and spot? Come on! Where is it? Why can't I find anything? Come on, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Come on. It's... Really, what am I missing? Okay. Okay, I'm sorry I'm I'm to have to do this, but I need to basically see what's going on. I don't know. I think we had a dead end, so let me find where it is. Okay, gameplay, records, audio, st ah, story mode. There we go. Okay, story mode. I said story mode. Ah, no. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing anything. Because basically, I was half expecting us to get a cutscene or something saying, oh, investigation done, something like that. Okay, let me head back into the pause menu and let me turn off story mode. Turn off story mode. You've made good time! I took an express train back to London. I can hear Lord Stronger, can you? Yes, it sounds as though he's talking to someone. Yes, I guessed correctly. Is everything in place? I had a private compartment on the train so I could check all the paperwork. It, it's... Kazuma-sama! Ah, your time is, in, is impeccable. It, it is. No doubt you have heard the sickening news. About reap about the leap reapers latest deliver devilry. Yes. I'm sure you don't believe it, of course, though, Lord Strongheart. That Lord Van Seeks could have done such a thing to Inspector Gregson. I believe only in the facts. And the facts in this case point to one thing. The unavoidable accuser of Lord Van Seeks for this crime. We must bring charges against the Reaper for taking the life of our legendary detective. Oh no, surely not! It's a truly regrettable situation. Tomorrow, the Forensic Science Symposium finally begins. At the very least, though, we can show the world our justice system's swift and equitable process. So does that mean the trial is tomorrow? Precisely! In fact, this is a fine opportunity for introductions. Kazuma? Kazuma. Ah, but of course, you're already acquainted, aren't you? Mr. Asogi will be present at tomorrow's proceedings. Lead in the prosecution. Wait. What? Kazuma? As I'm sure you're aware, he's a very capable practitioner of law. Kazuma-sama, a prosecutor. Okay, what do you have to say, Kazuma? I'm sorry for all the worry I've caused you, but it'll be all right now. Has your memory completely returned? Yes, completely. I remember everything, including what that prosecutor did to me at the office, making me proofread all, making me proofread his books, making me clean his toilet. He had a thing for the toilet for some odd reason. Including what I was coming here to do. Right. Kazuma-sama, I can't tell you how happy I am to see you alive and well like this. But 
How did you come to be here in London when you were su su suffering from amnesia? It was the voice. This past ten ye this past year, I've been hearing it in my head constantly, saying that th the same thing over and over again. Go to London. That's where your destiny awaits. It was that voice that guided me here to London. I'm so sorry for what's happened. Anyways, my memory might have returned to me, but there's something that won't return to the way it was before. Huh? What do you mean? I'm a prosecutor now, so I'm sure our paths will cross again very soon. Tomorrow's trial. I'm sure you can imagine what tomorrow's, that tomorrow's trial will be closely followed all over London. In fact, no, people all over the Empire will be watching closely to see how it unfolds. There is no salvation for anyone in a trial prosecuted by the Reaper of the Bailey. And now, the Reaper himself must stand in the dock. Quite so, the public want answers about the Reaper. Answers about how and why those who escaped conviction subsequently died mysterious deaths. But Lord Van Zeeks firmly denies any involvement in such matters. And there, and there have been thorough investigations that have, been, that have proven him to be innocent. That's certainly true. Or it has been, at least. Until now. Ah! No, tomorrow's trial. We'll mark the start of a new chapter in our country's great judicial history. Asogi. So, Kazuma will be prosecuted tomorrow. That's right. But he's a defense lawyer, Lord Strongheart. Not anymore. I made him. I rebuilt him using the finest technology London had to offer. I had that Enoch Drover fellow fix him up with some robot parts. He can do the ro Enoch, all, see both of his arms? Robotic arms. We also played a microchip in his head so that way he can, so that way he can prosecute a thousand cases in one minute. All in thousand all at the same time. Accomplished young law practitioners cannot pick and choose their roles. And imagine that it will and imagine that it will mean for the prosecution to know the strategy is commonly employed by the defense. I know how to use the summation examination. Yeah, really the suitcase wins the trial. And then everyone all the guilt all the jurors say not guilty. And then basically. And then at that point, Kazuma, I would like to hold a summation examination. A devastating combination, would you agree? He can use logic and bluffs at the same time. Absolutely. I have no doubt at all that Kazuma will be razor sharp as a prosecutor. But why Kazuma-sama? There are surely many other highly skilled prosecutors in Great Britain. He asked to- I have two swords. It was a personal request. I asked to be assigned to the trial. You- you asked for this? But why? Oh, simple! Revenge! Do you know how he was to me? He made me wear that robo- I had to wear that robo all the time. I wasn't given a chair. I had to clean his toilets. I had to proofread and collate his transcripts for his upcoming books. And, not to mention the fact when he discovered- He made me remove all the wine from his office. He made me carry it out. He said that I tainted it when I opened it. He said I tainted it with my presence. Do you know how much those barrels weigh, Rianisuke? I got a hernia out by the end of the day. It was painful. I'm guessing you intend to stand for the defense, don't you? Although, the Reaper appears to be turning down all offers of representation. I'm sure such a personal request would have been upheld. It seems unprecedented. Quite exceptional, in fact. You are quite right, Miss Mikotoba. Tomorrow's trial will be unprecedented and exceptional in every way. Ah, after all, the accused is one of Britain's greatest prosecutors, the pride of the Empire. It would be unwise to give the public a reason to perceive it as a judiciary closing ranks. So that's why you're happy to let Foreigner handle the prosecution. Rianisuke, let's see how your skills have been honed. After practicing law in this land for so many months, and then Rianisuke unleashes his ultimate weapon, the summation examination. Kazuma, I... 
I don't understand why you're being so hostile to me now. And why you have two swords. You already have a sword. Why you need to have two on your side? Because that way I can start dual wielding like General Grievous. This isn't going to end well, my friend. No, you are my learned friend. Oh, yes. We've well, noticed that there was a gun at the scene of the Inspector Grayson's death. Do you know if it belongs to Lord Van Zeeks? That would be a question for the lead detective investigating the scene. Well, the thing is, she wasn't sure, so she told me I should ask somebody higher up who, may know, who might know. That's right, Mr. R Naruto. Be direct. It's certainly a model that's issued to all personnel involved in the law enforcement, yes. Which includes prosecutors, as I'm sure you can imagine. In that case, it could actually belong to the victim. It, or, or it could belong to Kazuma. I don't use the guns. I have two swords. Yeah, Kazuma basically, he uses the, he basically, ca he carries one sword in his mouth. He starts slashing around with one in his mouth, one sword in his head, and then a gun in the other. He just has three weapons at once. Then he starts juggling the swords with one hand and then uses the other hand for the gun. No, Greg's had his gun on his person. What about Lord Van Zeeks? He claims it's currently not in his possession. What? According to his story, he lost it. In short, it's more than a little su suspicious. But just because the gun in question is the same type as the defendant's is no proof that's actually his. No, of course not. Nevertheless, the situation is great for Lord Van Zeeks. It doesn't look like we're going to glean much more here. Well, thank you very much, Lord Strongheart. Remember, tomorrow's trial will go down in our empire's history. There's much you can learn from the public gallery. Sorry to have taken up so much of your time. We'll see ourselves out. Hold it. Before you go, Ryanisuke. Oh, what is a Kazuma? I just wanted to thank you. Kazuma Sama, what? Sama, what? You took my determination to art and brought it with you over the ocean in my stead. And you carried out my role to perfection. You always were intent on setting British law in order to change our own justice system. It was your dream, and Mr. Arudo didn't want that to die with you. Yes, but I had another purpose for coming here. Oh? I actually have a favor to ask. What, what is it? This trial will be brought to you tomorrow. I'd like you to be there to see how it ends. Right in front of me, as the defense counsel. Why? What's this all about? I want to practice my techniques with the hallowed chalice. I know what you have what it takes. But Lord Van Zeeks would never put his faith in my hands. On the contrary, he's rec he recognizes your talent. He does. It's not easy to see behind the facade sometimes. Here, have a look at this. That's... That, that's Lord Van Zeeks, Inspector Gregson. I, yes, before Gregson knew Iris. Before Iris controlled his... Her, before Iris controlled his life. In a photograph that must have been taken some time ago by the looks of it. And who's the third person? It was displayed very prominently in the detective's office. In Gregson's office, you mean. Yes, what I'm trying to say is, if you really think you can trust the Reaper, you might find that some straight talking makes him take a different view. Take it. Gregson fo Gregson's photograph has been entered into the court record. I don't understand. Why are you giving me this? Just hurry, Rinosuke. Visiting hours of the prison are almost over. What are you doing, Kazuma? Okay, let's head back to the prison. We'll complete the investigative portion and then we'll end the episode off. Prison. First of November, local prison, cell one. Lord Van Zeeks is still reading that letter. 
We've been gone for quite some time, though. Either he's an incredibly slow reader, or it's an incredibly long letter. I might even be able to read English faster than he can. Knowing Albert, it's probably a novella. I was intending to ignore you entirely. But I cannot turn a deaf ear to such an insulting Nepo needs. Oh, um, sorry. I didn't think you'd hear that. I have the case notes brought to me in secret. I was reading them to pass the time. Yes, we heard that your trial is over tomorrow. Which is none of your business. So, have you found a lawyer? How many times must I reiterate the same thing? This is nothing to do with you. In other words, no. We were just talking to Lord Stronger and the prosecution for, prosecute for your trial has been decided. I'd expect nothing less, though I have no idea who it is. It's going to be Kazuma Asogi. Asogi? No! Oh dear God, help us all! We're doomed! We do you know what this means, my lord, Nibonese friend. He is, he is the, he is the du he is a double threat. He has my techniques that I have taught him, combined with the ruthless na the ruthless cunning of your kind. Oh dear God, I'm screwed. We, we must team up, my learned Nibodi's friend. This isn't my ideal situation, but our powers alone are incapable of stopping a beast of this caliber. We must join forces. Only then can we pose a... Th Only then can we stand a chance to oppose him. That made it look all drain from his face. Ha! <sighs> well then. Uh, it seems I'm going to have to engage in conversation with you again after all. Your submission examination will destroy him, just as it has destroyed me. Lord Van Zeeks, we came by with this old photograph. Where did you get that? It, w it was taken when I became a qualified prosecutor. It, uh, it's almost belie unbelievable. I... I assumed it was long lost. Um, is the man on the left there? Yes, that's my brother, Clint. Photograph has been added. It had to be, really. Apparently that picture was prominently displayed in Gregson's office. He had a deep respect for you, you know. Were you aware of that? Respect? That's nonsense! No, we've heard someone attached to my very clearly. It's Vector Gina Lestrade, no less. Well, maybe once, yes. There was a time things were like that. We were brothers in arms, jovially discussing the future of justice and other such lofty subject matters. That was a nice glimpse of the past. I thank you. I feel as though I got a nice glimpse of the past then, too. There was a glimmer of light in his eyes, a brief twinkle, an insight into the true nature of this man known to all as the Stone Cold Reaper of the Bailey. What's your opinion on the hairpiece? Oh, come on, I thought you would have, Van Zeeks would have had an opinion. We can give him this wig. Yeah, Van Zeeks can try to join the Red-Headed League. Ten years ago, my older brother, who was the director of prosecutions at the, prosecutions at the time, was murdered. And he was killed, as you know. And the killer, as you know, was a visiting suit from the Far East. Apparently, he was given one too many pay cuts and snapped. Not a single day goes by when I don't curse the name of Sogi. Every time, every morning before breakfast, I would curse the name of Sogi. Every time before lunch, I would curse the name of Sogi. Every time I went to the bathroom, I would curse the name of Sogi. Perhaps that's one reason why my, uh, why Kazuma is out for blood. I would actually spend, I would actually sit him down for an hour every day over tea and write about his father. Yeah, I can just imagine Kazuma would basically be forced while his mask, while his amniotic state, to hear rant after rant about Genshin. 
And did you know the man foolishly missed a speck of dust that was on the mantelpiece? That speck of dust resulted in an acquittal of a killer. Can you believe that? Of course his pay was cut. Though I would have cut it far more. My brother was always too lenient. 10% cut. I would have gone 68% cut. No more, no less. Genji has so you with Kazuma-sama's father. So what cruel twist of fate is it now? Ten years later, the man's son is to crucify me in some kangaroo court. <laughs> I love how Van Zeke's actually acknowledges the fact that basically any trial, that basically... I love how Van Zeke's actually used the phrase kangaroo court. I've been saying that in so many of my different... Th in my different conversation... In my different improv one-offs involving him. But basically, I never... Ex I forgot that he actually did say it in canon. I still don't understand why Lord Stronger apprenticed Kazuma to you. Uh, some sick joke, probably. I didn't want to go swimming with him, and he took it personally. It's what he does. No doubt he knew of the young man's true identity from the outset. But what? But what could there have been? What could he have been hoping to achieve? To screw me over. And let's not forget that he, it was only eight days ago that Kazuma recovered his M from his amnesia. Why would Lord Stronger assign this trial to somebody like that? Hmm, Asogi. That name is the very epitome of my bane. The bane that is you Nipponese. Right, your hatred of all is Japanese. Nipponese bane, that sounds like something that... That sounds like what Van Zeeks would name his sword. Behold, Nipponese Bane, as I strike down your case and cleave it in twain. I don't, it had only just been I had only just been appointed as a prosecutor when it happened 10 years ago. My brother Clint, the director of prosecutions, was hunting down a mass murderer, the so-called professor. A sign that the investigation is his partner was a certain visiting student dispatched from Scotland Yard. And that was Genshin Asogi. Exactly. I developed a deep respect for the man. He seemed noble-minded and chivalrous in the extreme to me. I was wrong. But none of us saw the true nature of that man. If I could even call him that. He is more beast than man. So I lost everything when it happened. But not the mullet. The mullet will forever be part of who I am. My esteemed brother, the people I believed in, and any semblance of right prevailing over wrong. Ow, oh, how awful. To avenge my brother, I prosecuted a soaky child. And then afterwards, I penned my first novel, Fighting the Rising Sun. My battle against the ne my eternal battle against the Nipponese menace. It wouldn't ordinarily have been allowed, but I beleaguered the ascribed prosecutor until he consented. What do you mean by the ascribed prosecutor? The man in charge of the professor case inquiry, Lord Mel Strongheart. What? What? Hit? Wait, him? Wait, what? Lord Strongheart? He was a highly accomplished prosecutor, but he agreed to relinquish the trial to me and act as my advisor instead. Since that time, he's the one person to whom I felt indebted. I'm sure that he must have seen your zeal for the case and recognized your potential as a prosecutor. Anyways, time passed, but then earlier this year, who should arrive in London but you? Ah, ah! And of all things, as a lawyer. I felt your animosity the first time I ever faced you in the courtroom. Your obvious deep loathing of us Japanese. I kept telling myself it was illogical. But for so many years, that hatred festered inside me. I could no longer control it. The beast was unleashed. And I can't say why. Now I know the history. But in the same way that I've long felt the Nipponese to be the bane of my life. To Kazuma Asogi, I am the bane of his. We are the bane of each other. The Reaper who sent his father to the gallows. 
He's looking for revenge, and he intends to take it out in court tomorrow. Inspector Gregson. Gregson's transfer to the Paris Police Prefecture had finally been arranged for the coming month. The fool. Iris was too powerful for him. Well, he'll never make it to France now. It's a tragedy. Oh, yes, come to think of it, he did mention something about that, didn't he? I wonder, does it happen often? Being transferred internationally, I mean? It's the first time I've ever encountered it. Oh. The Paris police welcoming an English detective is almost inconceivable. The wine is inferior, and I highly doubt the fish and chips would have been much better. I can't imagine what kind of magic Gregson must have worked out to put that ranger into place. Yes, Gregson, chances are he was begging. Please let me go! I don't want to be here with her ladyship! She scares me! Have you ever dealt with her ladyship? It sounds like the myth that mystery has even the Reaper perplexed. I'm afraid to say that we were very ignorant about Inspector Gregson's standing. We, he we hear that he was considered something of a legend at Scotland Yard. That's why Steve's playing, isn't it? Again, it was ten years ago that he first made a name for himself. By uncovering a decisive piece of evidence to expose the professor's identity. It if it wasn't for Gregson's singular approach to the case, the discovery would have never been made. What sort of approach? After my brother's life was taken, the inspector pushed for a full autopsy. Oh my, 10 years ago? Why is that so surprising? Autopsy was considered a desecration of the body at the time, and rarely before. And my brother was of course a noble. That made the idea of it even more unthinkable. But something Greg had dug up in his investigations made him determine, made him determine it ne was necessary. His powerful convictions somehow influenced the House of Lords, and as a result, I could avenge my brother's death. So you must have been so you must have had great confidence in the in the inspector's abilities then. And it's even more inconceivable that you would have taken his life. Inspector Gregson. About the gun used to shoot the inspector that was found at the scene. Ah yes, that's not mine. My gun would have far more bedazzling jewels. It would be my hallowed pistol. Really? Because common opinion seems to think that it is. What do you expect me to say to that? Lord Stronger informs us that you claim to have been that you claim to have misplaced your firearm. As embarrassing as it is, I'm afraid it's true. When did you lose it then? I don't know, probably at my, at my, one of my many anti nipponese rallies that I hold in Hyde Park on the weekends. That I don't know. Ow! I was issued with a revolver when I first became a prosecutor ten years ago. I must have stolen it somewhere, I suppose. Or left it somewhere, perhaps. You have something in common with Lord Van Zeke's after all, Mr. Naruto. A talent for misplacing things. I am nothing like him! Oh, no, 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 this has nothing to do with me. Don't drag me into it. Don't make the mistake of associating me with this, this Nepo news. I love how my jokes are now synergizing with Van Zeke's. Oh dear, the rift is very wide, isn't it? So it's not decisive evidence, clearly. But it doesn't look good, that's for sure. Mr. Naruto. Oh, that's the first time he's ever used my actual name. I've lost all confidence in my country's judicial system. I don't trust the police, the judiciary, or lawyers. But there's still one thing I'm willing to believe in. What's that? That's what you see in the eyes of another across the courtroom. A simple determination to know the truth. L Lord Van Zeeks. From the very first time we clashed in the Bailey almost a year ago now. I couldn't deny it, even though I dearly wished I could. Here is a loathsome Nipponese, who has absolute, in who has absolute integrity as a lawyer. 
There is only two other men I've known with that same look in their eyes. My brother Clint and Genshin Asogi. The man he idolized and the man who betrayed his trust in the most heinous way. When you showed me that photograph just now, it reminded me. You mean this photograph? <coughs> Back then I was able to laugh. I was free of the shackles of, mistru of the mistrust that plagues me now. I look to the future with hope. Since then, I protected myself against betrayal by refusing to trust anyone. But at times, the mire into which I've sunken into makes it almost impossible to breathe. I'm so sorry. So, Mr. Naruto, I want to believe in that look in your eyes. I need to believe in it. And if my boat, and if your boat, and if my, the prosecutor of the trial is in fact Kazuma Soki, I need to, I need to fight fire with fire. I will fight the prosecution's Nipponese with my own Nipponese. I will see which one is stronger. And you will be willing with the summation examination. Darn it, if we are going down, we are going down, we, we are going down in a, fl in a blaze of glory. You will use every submission examination to your advantage. You will press every juror. You will make every illogical claim you can think of. Every irrational thought you can muster. You will bring to reality and you will prolong the trial. It will be the eternal trial. And they will be worn down by the insanity. But not me, for I have built up a resistance to it of having to deal with it over and over and over again. In tomorrow's trial, will you advocate for me? Of course I will. It would be an honor. I'm so pleased, Mr. Naruto. Then my life is in your hands. For Lord Van Zeeks, that must have been an incredibly hard thing to ask. Which is why I simply cannot let this man down. Tomorrow, in the Old Bailey, against my old friend, Kazuma. To be continued. Okay, let's get on with the next cutscene. What? 2nd of November, 8.56 a.m. The Old Bailey, Defendant's Antechamber. There's that old familiar feeling again. The feeling that this episode is about to come to an end. Because I think now would be a good time to end things off. Anyways, I really appreciate that you stuck around to watch this episode. You're a great viewer and I hope you come back for the next one. If you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, share it to where you want. But I'll see you next time. Bye.